Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to a very interesting concept. And I'm not sure exactly how I will manage to do that in the next uh, few minutes. But I want you to try to listen to uh, what this gentleman says. He also has his program here in the YouTube. Um, but basically the question that I want to indulge in is that is there a general pattern that we find in the universe in terms of numbers and ratios between things um, that repeat themselves over and over again? And if these ratios repeat themselves over and over again, then is, 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 does that mean or does that prove or does that signify that there is a God? The spiral nature of the universe, for example, uh, does it follow any number pattern? So. This is one of the things that we're going to uh, try to answer today. If any of you know about uh, spirals and uh, Fib uh, Fibonacci curves, uh, the sequence of 0, 1, 1, 2, and then what you do is you keep adding from the last. So 2, 1 plus 2 is 3. So 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. So you see a ratio proportion of, for example, 8 and 5. And the perfect square would be one that is, you know, 8 by 5, for example. And so we find uh, that, uh, you know, staircases, and so how does it become a spiral? If it moves outwards, it'll become a spiral, and uh, maybe one day I will be able to demonstrate that. But in terms of Fibonacci curves, um, you can look that up in the internet. And the question I'm trying to answer is, or the question I'm trying to ask is, that if this universe runs on a mathematical scale in general, then what does that tell us? I'd like you to look at some things from nature. Hopefully I'll be able to do this uh, right from here. Uh, if you look at my computer screen, um, I want you to see this. Uh, let me make sure that we are seeing it. Uh, okay. Uh, you see this flower? Uh, This flower, uh, it is it's an orange uh, zinnia with 13 petals, okay, a Fibonacci number. And then you see this um, uh, days uh, with uh, 34 petals, okay. And uh, you see this in nature all over and over again. Here's eight petals um, in flowers, in space, in the womb, as you'll see, five petals uh, over here, a flower with five petals. And uh, here is uh, five petals again. Uh, and then here is uh, another one with 13 pe petals. And uh, here is one with five petals again. So you see this happening. Of course, there are exceptions to this. And uh, the next thing I want to show you is, uh, is, is uh, well, let's see. I want you to just hear this, uh, so I'm going to put this back on here. Uh, listen to what this gentleman says. He's, he can also be found on YouTube. Um. <coughs> because the Fibonacci spiral occurs over and 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 over in nature. We see curves in nature that match the equation. Let me actually show this to you here. Um, this is the, I just need to make sure that I'm getting this uh, correctly done. Uh, hopefully, you will be able to tell uh, right from there that that's how this, it's one, and then one, and then two, and then that's five, uh, that's uh, 2 plus 1, 3, 3, 5, 5, this is 8, and then 8 plus 5 being here. Uh, hopefully that came out well. Um, now you can go back to listening to him. So he's going to explain this. Right now on the screen. Let me give you some illustrations of this. When you go out into space and you look at a galaxy, this picture you're looking at is a galaxy which is called a spiral galaxy. What you find is that the arms of this galaxy curve 
with exactly the same curvature that you saw in the Fibonacci spiral in the last frame. The mathematical equation which describes the arms of this galaxy fit the equation for the Fibonacci curve perfectly. When you look at a wave, you find that the curl of the wave matches the Fibonacci spiral perfectly. If you took a Fibonacci spiral and set it on this wave, it would fit exactly. The equation of the curve of the wave is exactly what the Fibonacci equation says. You watch water go down the drain, counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere, clockwise in the southern hemisphere. You know what the first thing I did was when I got to Australia? <laughs> yeah, went into the men's restroom, pulled the plug. Sure enough, the water went down the drain the wrong way. But actually, that force is too weak. It would have to be reliable. But nonetheless, the point is that water goes down the drain in a Fibonacci spiral. The equation describes perfectly what's happening. Now somebody says, eh, all right, you, you got a gravitational something or other going on here. No, 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 no. Because when you have zero gravity and you have subatomic particles, they curl with a Fibonacci spiral. When you balance gravity by buoyancy, like in seashells, the curve of the shell is a Fibonacci curve. The equation describes it perfectly. That's true in fossil forms. It's also true in modern living forms. As a matter of fact, in your own garden, you can go out and see Fibonacci spirals in the snails in your garden. You see Fibonacci spirals in the horns of every living thing you can imagine. All of the different animals that inhabit the earth use Fibonacci spirals for the curvature of their horns. And that's also been true in the past because fossil forms show the very same thing. When you take a look at the curl of the teeth of a groundhog, it curls with a Fibonacci spiral. When you look at the curl of the teeth of a grizzly bear, it curls with a Fibonacci spiral. When you look at the beak of every bird you can imagine, they all curl with a Fibonacci spiral. When you look at the tail of a chameleon, it curls with a Fibonacci spiral. When you look at the vines of pumpkins and potatoes and tomatoes, they all curl with a Fibonacci spiral. When you take a look at the petals of a magnolia, they curl with a Fibonacci spiral. When you look at sunflower seeds, they curl with a Fibonacci spiral. When you look at the back of a pine cone, it curls with a Fibonacci spiral. When you look at a fingerprint, the pattern of the fingerprint curls with a Fibonacci spiral. On the floor of the ocean, there's a living thing called a Christmas tree worm, and its plankton straining mechanisms spiral up with Fibonacci spirals. The proboscis of a moth curls with a Fibonacci spiral. A spider web curls with a Fibonacci spiral. The brain has Fibonacci curvatures in it. Chlorotella algae, inside the little algae fragments, has Fibonacci spirals. The DNA helix has a Fibonacci spiral. We see the Fibonacci spiral in the cochlea of the inner ear. We see the Fibonacci spiral in the umbilical cord of the baby. Are you... So basically, the question uh, that I want to get to is, is that, is there uh, a mathematical, is there a mathematical uh, law that's working in the universe, and if there is, uh, I mean, this is only one of them, uh, but if there are uh, some mathematical formulas working in the universe, then, uh, you know, some people would argue, don't look deeper than that, uh, but I would say, no, we need to look deeper than that, um, and, and, and does that prove the existence of God? And, inshallah, one day I'll talk about um, the uh, this thing that we find in na nature, uh, also we find in the revelation of the Qur'an in different uh, instances like the first five ayat of Surah Al-Alaq and then moving onwards um, inshallah um, but uh, you know anyhow the point being that Allah knows best and there does seem to be a mathematical um, law upon which the universe uh, creates its beauty and symmetry and so on and so forth Jazakumullah khairun